Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thank for the chairs introducing Professor Hitoshi. Thank you. And uh, I also thank Professor, thank Professor Shi Qiangwei's invitation and uh, uh, Shi Qiangwei's recommendation and Professor Asakura's invitation. Uh, I'm Qinghua Liu from National Singulatory Radiation Laboratory, University of Science and Technology of China. Uh, Hefei Light Source is uh, located in our laboratory, and it uh, is my great honor to give a talk at the uh, this uh, journal club. The former talk has mainly focused on the methodology of China. Uh, I have to say those talks are very uh, great. Uh, my research mainly focuses on the ZAF's applications in energy materials. So today, today I will give a talk about the ZAF's applications. Uh, before the talk, I briefly introduce our lab. Here is Japan, here is South Korea, and here is China. Hefei is located in the Middle East. Uh, of China. This uh, is our Hefei light source. It's a small synchrotron ring. Its uh, circumference is about 70 meters. Uh, the electron energy of the storage ring is 0 .0, 0 0.8 GeV. Uh, in situ or operandal X Ray absorption spectroscopy has been extensively developed and widely used in recent years. In this talk, I will present some typical in situ ZAPS applications in energy materials. Uh, these are the representative 10 publications involved in this talk. Now, let's start the talk. The main contents. Uh, uh, include three parts. In the first part, uh, I will introduce briefly the background of energy science and uh, the relationship between energy science and the singular radiation technologies. Uh, it is knowing, along with the severe burning of fossil energy, the energy crisis and the air pollution have become the two most important themes uh, worldwide. Uh, as uh, estimated, uh, the fossil energy could only feed human about uh, 50 to 200 years, uh, no matter how in China or in the world. So adjusting the energy uh, structure and uh, developing clean and high efficient modern renewable re energy technologies are now becoming the important target of worldwide energy industries. In this sense, solar energy is clean and abundant. To, ex uh, to extensively explore the clean energy, developing renewable energy technologies, for example, converting solar energy to chemical energy by artificial photosynthesis are important means to reduce carbon emission and to achieve carbon neutralization. We uh, our group mainly focus on photoelectrochemical water splitting to produce uh, hydrogen from the water and uh, uh, or photo reduction of carbon dioxide to produce useful chemicals. However, the, the, reaction, the reaction mechanisms and uh, this uh, Above chemical reactions are still unclear, hindering the industrialization of these energy systems. It uh, is known that uh, the catal cat catalytic reaction mainly occurs at the surface of the uh, catalyst. To disclose the catalytic reaction mechanisms, it is needed to develop in situ characterization technologies to monitor the dynamic processes of the active size, active size and the reaction intermediates 
at the surface of the catalyst. Synchrotron radiation device uh, is an important platform for multi, multi disciplines sciences. It uh, has played an important role in accelerating the development of uh, lots of uh, disciplines such as uh, life, chemistry, physics, environment, uh, and uh, energy. In recent years, the requirement of energy science greatly promotes the development of new SR detection methods. X-ray absorption fine structure shafts is sensitive to the local atomic and electronic structure of a specific element and is quite suitable for developing in situ characterization techniques. In previous century, most of the surface studies were ex situ or static studies. In this century, time resolved surface was used was usually widely used. And in the most recent years, in situ surface study at working state was greatly developed and used in the energy field. The in situ characterization characterization techniques can be used to track reactions at working states, thus to reveal reaction mechanisms at the liquid solid or gas solid interfaces of various catalytic reaction systems. Now, the challenges in surface and interface studies on catalytic systems mainly lies in two aspects. First, the uh, obtained structure information is the, the average information of all absorption atoms. Uh, second, the amount of active size at the energy material surface or interface is less and it is hard to detect. Synchrotron radiation light has a high brightness and uh, is very suitable for the development of surface active in situ SR technologies. Uh, in this year, our group performed a series of in situ studies on catalytic reactions of advanced energy materials based on the in situ surface techniques and achieve a lot of interesting results. Now, in the second section, I will introduce several typical research studies of in situ surface applications in energy materials in our group. First, in the electrochemical reactions, the double layer at the solid liquid interface determines the catalytic activity and property during the catalytic process. The atomic structure of the catalytic active size vary, vary, vary and uh, some key intermediates are formed on the active size. Thus, in situ monitoring the dynamic structure of active size in the process of uh, catalytic reactions is crucial for revealing the catalytic reaction mechanisms of uh, energy materials. Uh, this is the schematic of our in-situ surface setup. Uh, this is the in-situ cell. It is a three electrode system, a uh, 19 ele uh, element high purity germanium fluorescence detector was used to detect the fluorescence. And uh, a cobalt single atom catalyst was used to electrocatalyze the hydrogen evolution reaction in alkaline, uh, alkaline electrolyte. And the high angle annular dark field STM image confirms the atomically dispersed cobalt atoms in the carbon substrate. The cobalt single atom catalyst shows a good HER activity and the 
uh, and the activity is uh, comparable with the data of a platinum carbon catalyst. Thus, uh, this cobalt single atom catalyst provides a good model for investigating the ca catalytic mechanisms of HER in alkaline solutions. Uh, the electrolyte is one more, one more per liter of uh, potassium hydro, hydro, uh, hydro uh, solution. In this uh, experiment, uh, we, see, we selected four typical uh, states to investigate the, uh, the HER mechanism. First uh, is the ex situ state uh, represents the cat, uh, uh, catalyst powder as prepared. Uh, two, the open circuit state represents the catalyst attached to an electrode, namely the working electrode immersed into the electrolyte, but no working voltage is applied. Uh, three, is the state of uh, uh, minus 0 0.04 uh, voltage, volt means a uh, minus 0 0.04 volt uh, voltage was uh, applied on the working electrode. For the state of uh, my, uh, minus 0 0.1 volt means a uh, minus 0 0.1 volt voltage was applied on the working electrode. Why selected uh, minus 0 0.4 and uh, minus 0 0.1 volt because minus 0, uh, 0 0.04 volt is the potential at which the HER reaction works at a low a current density of 0 0.5 potential, uh, uh, at which the HER reaction uh, 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 0 0.0 milliampere per, per square centimeter and uh, at uh, Minus 0 0.1 volt, the current density reaches to 10 milliampere per square centimeter. Uh, from the X ray absorption near edge spectroscopy, it can be seen that the absorption edge position in the cobalt K edge spectra was shifted to higher energy along with the increasing the working potential. Uh, this is a magnification plot of the uh, absorption edge. It is clear that on, on, at an uh, open circuit, the structure of uh, the active size is changed. This is very interesting. Uh, it means that uh, the, active, uh, the active site was first self-optimized before the reaction starts. From the zinc fitting results, we can see that the valence state of cobalt in the catalyst as prepared is two. Uh, after immersing into the electrolyte and uh, at uh, the open circuit state, the valence state increases to about 2.2. And at a working state, the valence state is further increased to about uh, to, uh, 2.4. The change of the electronic structure should be accompanied by the change of atomic structure. So, so in this figure, we present the cobalt K edge exhaust spectra of the catalyst at a different working state. From the Fourier transform curves of the cobalt K edge exhaust spectra, we can see that uh, only one peak at about uh, 1.6 uh, angstrom. This result confirms that the atomically dispersed cobalt on the carbon substrate, precluding the existence of cobalt oxides. Uh, interestingly, for the as prepared ex situ sample, the peak is located at uh, uh, continue. 
Yeah, go ahead. Ah, okay. Uh, the, this this result this result suggests the attainment of the uh, uh, the, the, this result confirms the atomically dispersed cobalt in the catalyst. Then we fitted the cobalt K8 exact result and, uh, and uh, it is found that at the exit state, the atomic structure of a cobalt active site is the cobalt nitrogen four. Uh, and uh, Okay, sorry. Uh, at uh, open circuit, uh, open circuit, the two cobalt nitrogen bonds were broken, and the only hydroxyl was uh, uh, adsorbed at the cobalt active center to form the uh, a hydroxyl cobalt nitrogen two uh, active structure at the working state. The hydrogen uh, hydroxyl cobalt nitrogen two active site adsorbs one water water uh, mo mo molecule, and then the adsorbed the water molecule was dissociated. Based on the exact result, we proposed the uh, ATR uh, mechanism. In the first step, one water molecule was uh, uh, adsorbed on the hydroxyl cobalt nitrogen 2 active site. Then the water molecule was dissociated and uh, the dissociation. It is hydrogen was uh, uh, dissolved at the adjacent uh, uh, nitrogen atom. In the third, in the third step, the hydroxyl was dissolved, 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 dissolved. In the fourth step, another water molecule was uh, dissolved at the cobalt active site and then dissociated. The dissociated hydrogen combined with the hydrogen at the uh, nitrogen site and the form of hydrogen molecule. In the second example, we can combine the exhausts and the Fourier transform infra, uh, infrared spectral copy to reveal the dynamics of the active site in the oxygen reduction reaction. Uh, in this study, a uh, nickel single atom catalyst was used to, was used to catal catalyze the ORR reaction. Similarly, the high angle annular dark field STM image and the exhausts are used to confirm the atomic dispersion of the nickel size. Uh, on the basis of the, the cyclic uh, water matrix test, uh, the in-situ uh, experiments on nickel single atom catalyst uh, were designed to examine three typical potential regions that uh, is uh, 1.1, 2, 0, 0.95, uh, 0 0.95 to 0 0.8 and uh, 0 0.8 to 0 0.4 water versus RHE, uh, which correspond to the double layer region of only surface cap cap capacity of charging. The onset reduction region of controlling reactive kinetics and the stability Reduction region dominated by diffusion kinetics 
respectively. Accordingly, three representative potentials of uh, 0 0.95, 0 0.85, and uh, 0 0.7, 0 vote uh, versus the RHE from the three different readings were carefully selected for the in situ measurements of a nickel single atom uh, uh, catalyst. From the sense spectra, it can be seen that the white line peak intensity gradually uh, decreased with the negative shift of the applied potential in the reduction reaction regions, uh, indicating a potential driven a higher 3D occupancy for single nickel size in the ORR. In contrast, the white line peak of the nickel single atom catalyst at uh, X situ uh, and uh, one, point, one, one volt conditions remains unchanged, suggesting the robust and uh, stable local structure of uh, nickel single size uh, without a uh, chemical adsorption of uh, surface species uh, in the double layer regions. Uh, the exact results uh, show, show the evolution of the local atomic structure, structure of uh, nickel single atoms within the catalyst at uh, the OR conditions. Uh, at the applied potential, as the applied potential decreased from uh, 0 0.95 to 0 0.7, it can be seen that the single dominant peak at the uh, at about uh, 1.3 angstrom in the FT curve of the nickel KH exhaust spectra has greatly changed with about 20% damping of the peak intensity and a slight positive shift of 0 0.05 angstrom for the peak centers. Uh, this suggests that the local structure of nickel is evidently changed during the ORR process. The FT nickel cage exhibits fitting results uh, reveal a coordination number of four, including two short uh, and two long nickel nitrogen bonds for nickel single atom size with a starting potential of uh, 0 0.95, which is similar to that measured at the ex situ conditions. Uh, interestingly, for the nickel single atom catalyst at a potential of 0 0.85 volt, the coordination number of the nearest nickel nitrogen bonds is evidently reduced to two together with the appearance of one additional nickel oxygen co coordination at R equal to 1.95 angstrom. Uh, these results imply that the potential driven structure evolution of nickel single size truly occurs at the ORR conditions by releasing nickel centers from the uh, nitrogen to carbon substrate to form a meta meta stable and uh, energetic near free nickel one nitrogen two active site. Uh, this structure favors the surface adsorption of uh, oxygen molecules for efficient uh, ORR. Uh, Uh, this is the uh, operand SR uh, synchrotron radiation FT, uh, FT in, uh, infrared uh, resource. Uh, from the resource, uh, we can see that uh, a, new a new peak at uh, 
nine hundred and eight per centimeter, and this peak can be assigned to the nickel oxygen, implying the production of the single liter oxygen on the nickel active site. Another peak at the three thousand and four hundred sixty-five per centimeter can be assigned to the hydroxyl uh, group. It is showing that the peak intensity of uh, nickel oxygen increases, and the peak intensity of uh, hydroxyl group decreases with the acceler with, with accelerating the reaction. Uh, it uh, is predicted theoret theoretically that the emergence of a single oxygen group could accelerate, could accelerate the electron reaction process. Our electrochemical measurements clearly show a four electron reaction. Uh, all these above results demonstrate the dynamic evolution of nickel active size during a four electron ORR reaction. Uh, the, th the third example, this is a work that only uses infrared spectroscopy to reveal the change of reaction intermediates in both OER and ORR. I introduce briefly. Uh, we used a lattice string the nickel iron metal or organ or organic framework morph, morph material as the catalyst. The catalyst shows prominent, prominent OER and ORR uh, activity. Uh, this is the XRD, uh, XRD result. The XRD result confirms the latter's uh, uh, string of the nickel iron morphs. And the X2 examples re reveal an elongation of the metal metal coordination in the material. Uh, these are the in situ uh, FTIR results. Uh, this, uh, the in situ SR FTIR was performed to reveal the evolution dynamics of the reaction intermediates during the OER and ORR. Uh, the results show no obvious absorption band for the latter strain morphs were observed. Uh, over the vibration frequency readings uh, at a potential of uh, uh, 1.0 volt. This potential is uh, slightly positive with, res with respect to the onset onset potential of the ORR. Uh, interestingly, when a potential of 0 .0, 0, 0 0.6 volt was applied, uh, a prominent uh, absorption band appeared at uh, 1048 per centimeter, uh, which suggests that the emergency of a crucial intermedi intermediate during the ORR process for the latter strain the morph. Uh, in comparison, no vibrational absorption band was observed for the pristine morph at uh, 0 0.6 volt or lower potentials. Um, most interestingly, a new absorption band located, uh, located, located at uh, 1048 per centimeter was also observed in the SRFTR uh, FTIR spectra of the latter stream morph at the OER potential of uh, 1.6 volt compared to that at uh, 1.2 and uh, those of uh, the pristine uh, morph at uh, 1.6 volt or higher potentials. Uh, this uh, rep uh, reproducible phenomenon may Indicate that a similar intermi intermediate species is generated during both the OER and the ORR processes. 
the this new vibe vibration uh, vibration band can be assigned to OOH group. Uh, this IR signal is uh, driving potential dividend and increases in intensity with in, with increasing the driving potential, suggesting the emergence of uh, reaction intermediates during the reaction. Uh, okay, all the above uh, works are in situ self uh, studies. In the following, I will present some typical studies on the structure activity reactions by using ex situ valves in the field of photocatalytic and photoelectrochemical water splitting. Uh, it is known that uh, to improve the solar energy conversion efficiency, the key is to efficiently transfer the photo excited carriers from the bulk to the surface active size. Uh, in this way, the photo excited electrons and holes recomb recombination can be reduced and uh, the quantum efficiency can be increased. Till now, a lot of uh, nanostructures have been designed to improve the photo carrier as transfer. Okay. Uh, Titanium dioxide is a good photocatalyst for solar water splitting, but it, uh, it, uh, its energy band gap is too wide and can only absorb the UV light. To widen the absorption range of the titanium dioxide, we constructed a multi-layer structure based on the titanium dioxide nanotube arrays. The exhaust uh, uh, results revealed that uh, the atomic structure of the middle layers uh, is iron to titanium, titanium oxygen five, and uh, the uppermost layer is a cobalt oxide cook, cook catalyst. Uh, the multi-layer structure modifies the electronic structure of the base material. Uh, the electronic structure characterizations shows the energy band gap of the iron titanium at the interface of the multi layers. My internet uh, is unstable. Okay. Uh, uh, this channel can regulate uh, the transfer of photo carriers and uh, reduce the recombination of the photo excited electrons and holes. Uh, this significantly increases the difference. Yeah. Uh, in the second uh, example, we constructed an ultra thin atomic layer structure to improve the charge transfer efficiency. Uh, for the first time, we have fabricated a three cobalt uh, atomic uh, layer uh, structure, nano, nano sheet, and the thickness of the nano sheet is about uh, 1.3 nanometer. Uh, this uh, thickness is less than the diffusion length of electron in oxides. Thus, the photo excited carriers can highly uh, efficiently transfer to the nanosheet surface. The transient absorption spectra shows the TA signals of the nanosheet is basically 
uh, larger than zero. This means that the food carrier's recombination in the nanosheet is greatly suppressed. Uh, in this structure, uh, in uh, yeah, generally in the bulk of cobalt hydroxyl oxide, the coordination number of the first shell of uh, cobalt oxygen is six. Uh, the exams result show that the coordination number of the first shell of uh, cobalt oxygen in the nanosheet is reduced to about five. Uh, thanks to the cobalt oxygen dangling bond in the nanosheet, the electronic structure of the nanosheet is modified, uh, which promotes the electron transfer between the sur uh, surface active site and the uh, sub, uh, uh, and the uh, uh, adobe, uh, 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 at the sub uh, at the surface. Uh, in the last example, we constructed an in-plane heterostructure based on the carbon nitride. The carbon nitride and the graphite carbon uh, form the heter heterostructure in the plane of uh, carbon nanotride. Uh, the carbon na nanotride catches holes and the graphite carbon catches ele electrons. Uh, this greatly improves the separation efficiency of the photo excited holes and the electrons in the photo catalyst. Uh, and the uh, this uh, result, uh, results confirms the coexistence co of uh, graphite carbon and uh, carbon nanotride in the material. Uh, okay, in summary, we have uh, developed the in situ ZAFS techniques, and the in situ ZAFS are used to investigate the structural dynamics of uh, active sites for advanced energy materials. Furthermore, ex situ ZAFs are used to reveal the structure activity relationships for a lot of low dimensional nanostructured energy materials. Uh, at last, uh, I will thank uh, Professor Shi Chang Wei and our group at the Hefei Light Source. Uh, this is uh, our group at the Hefei Light Source. Uh, this is Professor Shi Chang Wei, and uh, this is me. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Zhi Hu Sun. He stayed at KK for three years under the supervision of uh, Professor Oyanagi more than 10 years ago. Uh, um, by the way, uh, my listening comprehension is not good. Uh, uh, my spoken English uh, is not good. Uh, maybe I can't catch what you see, but if I don't understand what you are talking, I will invite Professor Wei and Dr. Swing to help answer your questions. Uh, I'm sorry that I asked about internet. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your talk. Now it's open to have uh, discussions and questions. Any questions from the audience? So can I ask oh, a question? Please, please. So thank you very much for your nice talk. I'm uh, Kyotaka Sakura. Uh, the, I have one question about the uh, last part. Yes, here. So the, you said that electron four pair separation occurs between C3, N3 and graphite or other. See, uh, uh, sorry, I uh, could you, could you re repeat? Yes, yes, yes. So yeah. in this picture, uh, the part, the substrate is six three nine four carbon nitride. Oh, C C three mm. eight four eight four. Oh. 
a uh, carbon carbon three nitrogen four. Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 mm. yes. Uh, yes, this structure is a C three and nitrogen four. Mm -hmm. And this is this is the carbon graphite graphite carbon. Mm -hmm. So uh, we construct the uh, heterostructure structure uh, of C three nitrogen four and the graphite carbon. So, in this case, is it possible to uh, use micro beam or nano beam to only look at graphite region and C3 and N3 region in your system? Or uh, you look at the both region. A local region. A local. Look at the. So the what is the spot size uh, of your X-ray beam? Uh, maybe it's several nanometer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's be a little bit larger than mm -hmm. the size. Mm. But in the future, you you are going to do some micro beam or nano beam to look at each region. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. uh, very <laughs> suggestion. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, my uh, na nano beam can do something to select uh, the site, different sure. site. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you are welcome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, may I ask one question? Uh, okay, you performed please. the combined experiments with uh, DAS and S FTIR. And uh, you yes. said the IR is also coming from synchrotrons, right? Uh, yes. It's generated to do the measurement. We're using at a different bin line. Different bin line, okay. Bin line. Ah, okay. I saw that it's in, in the same beam line, so I was surprised, yeah. but it, it's, it was at the different beam line. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, but we, we can try mm -hmm. uh, in the same beam line, but in the Shanghai single song radiation, we have the beam line here mm -hmm. and connect to. Uh, but in my highway in Beijing, no. Separate it. Okay, I see. Thanks. You are welcome. Okay, any other questions from the audience? Okay. Uh, if not, thanks, speaker. Okay, oh, one question from the host. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, I would like to say. Thank you. Uh, I have one question on the uh, on the nickel uh, single atom cartridge. Or oh, could you show me uh, the exact scar fitting results of the nickel single atom? Or oh, uh, could you show me the slide? Uh, which one? Uh, nickel nickel single atom cartridge. Oh, nickel single atom, please. Ah. Uh, no. Oh, okay. This, ah, yes, is yes, the... this one. And uh, the, the next, next slide, maybe the car fitting results. You show, uh, uh, and then and next. Next. Yes, 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 yes this, that one. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the previous one. Yes, that one. Uh, uh, in the car fitting results, uh, the, you, you distinguish the, the, the adjacent nitrogen and the oxygen uh, okay. very, very precisely, but the, yeah, I think uh, the it is usually not not easy to distinguish the nitrogen and oxygen by uh, exhaust carb heating. Uh, uh, you are confident uh, for the for the yes. uh, result. Uh, you are right. Uh, it's very difficult to distinguish yeah. the nitrogen and the uh, uh, oxygen uh, only simply using the step result. But in this uh, study, he also 
do the measurement in red. Yes. So you can get something, information from the infrared. So they are thinking uh, in here, in the first label of the nickel, mm -hmm. I will have two substrates and let the fitting yeah. and get the result uh, is two share is a little bit better than the single one. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> it's the reason they are, they are missing the consider two measure together to do this. Okay, okay, I see. Thank you. But correct. Uh, only the subs is difficult to distinguish. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for a nice talk. Yeah, you are welcome. Okay, uh, any other questions? Okay, if not, uh, thank you for a nice talk. Thank you. Back to you, Chair. Thank you.